Welcome everyone once again to the Fierce Network TV studio here in Barcelona covering MWC. Well, we're coming to the end of day two, but there's no tired faces in the studio today because we're talking about network automation, something that has been all over the show, and we have a great panel for you. Let me start with you, John, if, if you can tell us a little bit about perhaps definition setting. Folks talk about automation and OSS modernization. What do they mean? What are some of the differences? They're, they're interchangeable, I'd say, but they're with some subtle differences. I think from an OSS modernization perspective, you know, telcos recognize the need to automate. However, some of them are faced with some unfortunate challenges of reducing legacy systems that are 20 or 30 years old um, before they do that. And, um, you know, that's something that they've punted on for years, if not decades. And, you know, once they have that, you know, modern foundation in place, they can then start to automate their IT and network operations, gain benefits from you know, reduced costs, provide faster services to customers in a more modern and uh, efficient way. Great, thank you, John. What about you, Harsha? Would you agree or, or anything to add? Yeah, I, I do agree with John. I think uh, you know, when it comes to network automation, you, know, you have to think about automation at all layers, right? You know, you, you know, we at Reach have been working hard to create an entire telco in a box automation, right? I think the reason I was late by seven minutes coming to this show, uh, because we accepted a challenge uh, to create a completely commercial mobile brand in seven minutes. Um, and we did, you know, we launched a new mobile brand uh, and it's completely commercial. You can go activate your service, move your number, you got the device store, taxes, everything, right? Now, if you go back, like even five years, it's just unheard of, right? You know, it costs millions of dollars to do something like that. So I think automation has to be done at the network layer, the OSS, BSS, all the way top to the service layer. Wow. And that's what we've been working on. That's very impressive. So yes, completely yeah. agree. <laughs> um, Monica, you have a privileged position as an analyst. You get to talk to everyone and hear their stories and, and gather your, your insights. So there seems to be a change in CSP's organizations with 5G particularly. Why does 5G drive that change internally, perhaps opposed to g previous generations? Well, I guess that the issue is that there is more uh, complexity. Networks are more complex. And usually complexity is a bad thing, right? I mean, why would you want to have anything more complex? But complexity means choice, flexibility, and opportunity. However, to use that opportunity to your advantage and not to your disadvantage, you need to be able to automate because there are so many things you can change that the human, a human doing it manually just doesn't work. So uh, automation becomes a necessity throughout the network, not just in Iran, not just everywhere across it, if you want to benefit from the technology. Technology is great, but in order to really benefit from it, you need uh, uh, automation, I believe. And that's, that's where it's not an easy path. Driver. That's why we need them to help us out uh, because it, it is not trivial at all. Yeah. And, and perhaps then on that note, John, why is now the time to think about automation and, and what are some services that are driving that? You know, we're seeing a, an uptick in uh, the, the need to con for converging both wireline, wireless, and now satellite services uh, uh, into solutions. And so, you know, satellite technology has often been just a backup, but now it's a it's a it's a bona fide provider, um, and with global reach and in high high performance. And so, I think connecting satellite technology to the RAN to the underlying transport is something that we're starting to see really take up in terms of an automated solution. Brilliant, Harja, do you want to close the panel out and with your thoughts here? Yeah, I, I actually agree. I think the I think convergence is a, a big driver. I think to me it's convergence. You know, we are at reach in the middle of it because we literally work with a lot of ISPs in the U.S. and creating a converged mobile you know internet product or mobile fixed wireless product. And I think the other aspect of it is also number of devices in everybody's life, right? You know, either devices we physically interact with or devices just are there and giving some information to us, right? If you go back five years or 10 years, the number of devices per person that either we physically interact with or are in our lives was at least one-tenth than what we have today. And that number is gonna keep growing both in developed economies and you know, in developing economies. So I think that you know, as you know, Monica pointed out before, you have to have automation to handle it, you know, to scale it. So Excellent. yeah, I think timing is good now. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, it's just five minutes. We can't get to the depth of this topic, obviously, but what a great opportunity for us to, to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time out of what I'm sure is a busy week here in Barcelona. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you.